we have the running seam solo. Seam solo. Did you see the workman up there? The guy with the uh, fluorescent uh, bands on his, on his jacket. There's more construction has started. I tried to put the camera a bit further outside so we can see it, but I can't actually get that far. If I put the camera any farther out, people are going to trip over it, so i got to be careful. Just off to the right of our view here, there's brand new construction. Those of you who have been here, there's a building on the corner there. It's a, a five street corner. And as you can see, there's a building on one corner is shrouded, it's just gone up. The building kitty corner to that, or nearly kitty corner to it, is coming down. And we didn't know this. It's the place where they're selling uh, what they call Daigaku Imo. I know, university potatoes, it's the name of, of uh, a casual dish. It's uh, potatoes, roast potatoes glazed with sugar. And it's a thing that you buy and walk around the street with. Oh, here's Sukasan. She doesn't see me. I wait. Oh, she does. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Sukasan. Anyway, the building's coming down. It's a four-story building, and it's all shrouded now. And the sign says it'll be down, and they plan to finish it by December 28th end of the year so they've got three months to pull it down and the usual signs there's uh, claim signs outside about this that uh, say there's no asbestos level one no asbestos level two and none at level three whether we believe that or not i don't know oh i see just a minute i see when we did it the other day with taran sun we must have missed it i see okay got it there we are there's our view Okay, you can see construction trucks, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if it's going to be noisy or not, I don't know, no idea. As far as the typhoon is considered, it's all gone. The typhoon's completely gone. And it's going to be rainy for the next couple of weeks. Why, this is the garbage time for the, for the restaurant at the corner. He's going to throw the garbage over the edge. Can't quite see it. He's got a truck waiting below. There it goes. There's some garbage. <laughs> Morning in a saxa. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the restaurant roof. That place, it's two million yen to rent that place. And it's really distorted the rents all over the district now. The, I think that's why they started this construction on the one you see on the left. It had been an empty lot for a couple of years, nothing going on. And But when the owner saw that rent across the street, two million yen per month, he must have just gone crazy. Why would they have trash on the roof? It's a restaurant. It was busy till late last night. They probably closed about 11 o'clock and they've got all their stuff they clean up. You can't put your garbage out at 11 o'clock at night. So they've... Uh, They've kept it up on the roof. There's their storage is up there on the roof, and now the garbage truck is here, and out she goes. I think he's dropping it into their little garbage truck. You know, you've seen the truck that comes for our Korean hot dog place. It's a similar truck over there, and I think he's dropping the bags right into the garbage truck. So I don't think there's any concern about them breaking. I don't know. I haven't inspected. No, no customers up on the roof. No, 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 no. Okay, today's, uh, it's for the first time in months, there's nobody has dropped anything on my desk. It's amazing. We're getting the lights fixed. We, we had this out for a, for a sample. It looks like they're making an announcement about this. Kishida-san is in New York right now. The Prime Minister is in New York. He spoke to the United Nations yesterday or two days ago, depending on your, your time frame point of view. And I think it's, he's done for today, but tomorrow he's heading for the New York Stock Exchange, and he's supposed to make a small speech, a short speech, about economic matters, including tourism. And the feeling on the ground is that he is going to make an announcement about this, as in, start your engines. We're opening the country. I don't know. I have no inside track. But the, the mood is that he is about to announce either the opening immediately, as in like next week it's open, or op or at least state a schedule for it. We're going to open over the next six years, or, or whatever it is he's going to say. And the feeling, the feeling on the street, the chat, you know, what's he going to do, what's he going to do, is because of the previous announcement that they want to get people into Japan to enjoy the autumn foliage, that means like 
you have got to do this right now. So given that today's September 22nd, Dave's guess, he's going to make some kind of announcement that it's going to be done in stages and that starting October 1st, might he do it for October 1st? Starting October 1st, individual tourists will be allowed to come as long as they're vaccinated X number of times and as long as they promise to wear a mask when they're here and with a cap, maybe there's going to be like 100,000 per day or something. This is my guess, October 1st. I think I'm going out on a limb here because it's probably not going to happen. October 10th maybe is a more realistic date. But if we're having a pool here, if there's, if there's a pool, I'll put my, my 10 bucks in on October 1st. Although probably October 10th would be a more realistic date. I don't know. <laughs> no idea. No idea. <laughs> no idea. I don't know. Of course I know nothing. Whatever. Put, put your date in here. Place your bids. Put your $10 egg in the... <laughs> I haven't the slightest idea what's going on. Okay, what are we doing? We're working on the Surfer Girl. For those of you who don't know, this is a reproduction by Okada Yoshio, which we have permission. We are licensed by the family to reproduce his works. We are starting with a clean, simple, easy one. Easy meaning... We have enough information to make it properly. We have the resources to make it properly, and there is market demand for it. So this will be a good one for us to get started, to show the family that, yes, we can do it. Yes, we can do it nicely, and it will provide you some revenue. In other words, it's going to ring all the bells, check all the boxes in a moderate way to start with. Once this is up and running, we then sit down with a couple of the family members, or the, the family member who is you know, the boss from their end, and we work out projects. Maybe it's a subscription series for a couple of years down the road based on Okada-san pictures. Maybe it's a, one of his kabuki prints. We just do a single one-off, but at a big more complicated picture than this. I don't know. We are not going to confine ourselves just to making reproductions of what's already been published. This is the first sort of trial balloon just to see that we can get going. Karen is not here today. She's in the air as we speak. She's on the way to Japan. And in fact, should I say this or not? Koringami, the moderator, is here. Koringami is the moderator here, but there's the other two mods. John Becker is off today on a, on a real estate networking deal, and Karen is flying. So Koring's here by himself. Can he handle the pressure? Organized. I wasn't really ready for this. Okay, let's get organized. What are we going to do? We're going to, we were clearing these two areas. So let's, uh, it's crunch crunch time. Let's get the camera in. <laughs> Very heavy mod duties in this channel. So also, I was going to ask anybody, my chat appearance has completely changed today and I didn't do anything. I now have commands pin this comment, reply to this comment. This didn't exist before. Something has dramatically changed in my uh, chat, which I'm seeing from within OBS. Someone says, hey, Dave, when is the store opening today? We were just talking about that. <laughs> I don't know. We're waiting for the announcement by the Japanese government on the resumption of general tourism. At this end, we are preparing, preparing, preparing. And once it becomes clear when and where and how general tourism is going to resume, we then make our decisions on the shop. We are busy at the moment getting it ready. We are training people. New signage. One of my jobs today is to uh, do a Kinko's mock up, uh, do a mock up at Kinko's of the new signs for the front door. We are preparing, but um, until and unless general tourism opens up, we cannot afford to run a shop so so just hold tight
Did you notice the sound of this board? Now that we've chopped away a bunch of stuff in the middle here, it's perhaps something to do with the fact that it's sound inlaid. It's acting like a sounding board. There's an echo and a vibration on this thing. No barren sign. Yeah, the, the barren sign is saying, I'm talking about the, the door signs, the, the small signs on the doors that explain opening hours and what we do here and pictures of what's inside and stuff like that. Well, the barren sign is staying, although actually the barren sign at the moment is quite a problem because it is in very, very definite need of maintenance. The metal frame is still strong and totally okay, but the canvas sign is now heavily faded and worn and a bit tattered at the edges, and it needs replacement. Not quite sure exactly. It's not one of our highest priorities because most people aren't going to notice it, but we do need to uh, refresh it. And the staff here always sits here with the same suggestion. Dave, now that we're going to refresh it, let's get a new image instead of a baron. I'm like, of course, no, let's keep the baron. And they're no, let's do a new image. And there, if I let them do it, they would put my face on it. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> that is absolutely not going to happen. How is the shutter design faring? I don't know, because we never see it. The shutter stays open all the time. <laughs> it looks good, Cody Gummy. Actually, we had it closed the other day. We took some pictures the other day. So we had it closed. And then also, we had it closed again for the typhoon. The reason Coding Gummy is asking about the shutters is because he did the Photoshop work for me on that one. No, of course we're going to keep the Baron. Of course, of course, of course, of course. It's not really a bad piece of wood, you know. In the old days, I would have said that it's nothing special and I would have complained about it. But considering what we've got going on these days, I am not in any way going to complain about this piece of wood. Not at all. It's quite hard. It's crispy. Those lines should hold for hundreds and hundreds of copies. Should be okay on this. Range a bit troublesome, but uh, that's okay. You can handle liquid enough of this.
at the pool the other day. I don't know, it would have been uh, not yesterday, two days ago. One of the regular guys, he's not one of the swimmers. And uh, when we're standing waiting to get into the pool, it's a crowd of us. There's people who are going to be into the pool. There's people who are waiting to get up into the gym, the training room, the running track, all that sort of stuff. So a few minutes before it opens, it opens at 7 o'clock. And we don't wait outside. We go into the big building up the elevator to the lobby of the fitness center. And we're all hanging around. The women are over there ready for that entrance. And the guys are hanging around over here waiting for this entrance. And this is Japan. You know, the clock is there, tick, 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 tick. And we all just stand there and wait. And exactly when the second hits 7, the... the, the the guy at the desk says, okay, here you go, and we all, in we go. So in a few minutes before we go in there, <laughs> we, we chat a little bit. I don't know their names, I don't know anything, but these are just the people at the fitness center, you know, the guy who uses the next locker and stuff like this. So we know each other, and when someone hasn't been there for a few days, hey, I've missed you for a while, or what's going on, you know, this sort of stuff. One of the guys, we call him the marathon man, and when, when he's not there, hey, where's the marathon man today, you know? Because he wears a T-shirt, Vancouver Marathon, uh, 1917, and uh, you know whatever. He's been to like every marathon overseas. This is his hobby, going to marathons all around the world all the time. And the other, anyway, the other day, Marathon Man comes in, and he, he's got a he's got a, a little bit of a heavy bag with him, and he opens it up. And what he's done, <laughs> he's been to Costco. There are there are Costco here in Japan now and then, they, uh, here and there. They've opened up 10, 15 years ago. Costco is here. There's, there isn't one near me because they're all out in the suburbs. It's not a downtown kind of shop. It's a, it's a suburban type of shop. I know nothing about the Costco culture over in North America, but here in Japan, it's a, it's an Im, an import business. Everybody knows it's a foreign business, and they're out in the they're out in the suburbs near major cities. So I've never been to one here in, in Japan at all. I'm like, what am I going to do? Buy a giant trolley full of food? It doesn't work for me, you know. Anyway, anyway, he was out there with his family, and he bought. Uh, a pack of muffins, or, or what he and Costco in Japan are calling muffins. And there's these six monstrous, well, he had to haul it out of his bag and put it on the table. And he said, okay, who's the lucky six people? You know, but he looked at me first because I'm a foreigner. He said, here, well, no question, no question. Here, pick one, pick one, pick one. So I picked, you know, thank you very much. Oh, thanks for the present. You know, I picked this, this thing. It's wrapped in plastic, a, a muffin here. And he says, let me know, let me know how you like it. It's great, you know, these are really, really cool. He's really enthusiastic, he's really enjoying this. It's a real big deal for him to try this uh, imported foreign food. <laughs> so, I'm, whatever, thank you. I haven't had a muffin, you know, a nice North American muffin. I haven't had one of those since last time I was, uh, was over there. And he, you know, five other people got, got lucky and, and, and got these, you know. And he hasn't been back for a couple of days. He wasn't there yesterday, and he wasn't there again this morning. And we, of course, have to, you know, thank him for the, for this, for the, for the present he gave us. <laughs> but I have, to, I have to be careful when I thank him for this, because like, my face is probably going <laughs> to show a different story. <laughs> I get the thing back and get a cup of coffee ready and ready for lunch, you know. And I thought, wow, I'm going to really have a good, deep, rich muffin, you know. And nobody in his right mind in the culture that I come from, Canada, whatever, would have called that a muffin. It was sort of a little bit domed on top. The bottom was the same width as the top. It was wrapped in this plastic, and it was sweet, and it was cake. It was like the sweetest, stickiest cake. If you, you couldn't, if you picked it apart with your fingers, that's it. You got to head for the bathroom to wash your hands, because your hands are now sticky from, from the sugar and stuff. And it was sweet cake with a little bit of a dome top, and Costco Japan is calling this muffins. Although, whatever, they should be sued for libel. <laughs> I don't know. So I think what they've done is Costco apparently is really, really, really successful and popular here. That big Japanese, uh, the big French supermarket chain, Carrefour, they came here. 10 or 15 years ago or so, and they were going to dominate, and they were gone in like two years, everything. So they had brought their own culture here, and Japan said, tasted it, and said, no thanks. And what Costco has done, clearly, based on this little experience of mine here, is they have brought the name and the concept and the mystery of this foreign company, wow, come and try it, but they've changed everything to suit Japanese tastes. At least they've changed this muffin. light, sweet, frothy, no guts to this thing at all. And I get it, maybe the kind of muffin that I would have bought at uh, the Whole Earth Foods or something, 
back in back in Canada, if you gave that to a typical Japanese person, they'd say like this is not human food. This is for a horse or something because it would be so rough and thick and heavy. So I don't know. I haven't had any more experience than that, but it seems uh, like uh, this is what's happened. They've they've adapted their food very much to the taste. But the one thing I'm curious about, and actually I didn't ask him, we were all too busy chatting about the muffins he brought, but I also want to ask him, what's the deal? You've got a typical Japanese house and a typical Japanese kitchen, right? You have no room for all this stuff. What's the purpose of going to Costco and buying a car full of stuff when you've got no room to put it? Sounds more like a UK muffin, maybe, I guess, I don't know. It's, it was light and sweet, and it certainly wasn't a muffin like I would have known back in Vancouver, or like the muffins me and my partner used to make ourselves. Looking at the Costco muffins on YouTube, they don't seem that different from US ones. I don't know, I don't know what a US Costco muffin is like. I know what Dave's concept of a muffin is like. And they gotta be heavy, they gotta be heavy and rich, and a, a, a real Canadian muffin, a real one, that's enough. That's a meal in itself, and I really probably don't even need to eat too much for the rest of the day. So when he comes back tomorrow, or, or, when, or next time I see him, you know, he'll say, how was it? And I, of course I have to do the polite thing and say, yeah, that was really, uh, that was really, uh, really interesting, or, or something. Or just do the Japanese thing and say, hmm, oishi, <laughs> which everybody expects you to say anyway, so. <laughs> Man, I've had experience with that enough times. I <laughs> mean, in each case. <laughs> oh, Tony. But it's okay, I had some muffin hits when I was there looking, uh, look, taking care of my mother last spring. I got some muffins now and then, so it's okay. So I'm not in, in desperation, haven't had a muffin in decades, that sort of thing. No, no, I'm okay. And we've got the mix and stuff upstairs. If I wanted to, I could just get busy with the, with this, with the range upstairs. You know, so. Someone's getting hungry. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> mm. So is the marathon man going to be the muffin man? I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? The culture at the pool just before we open, you know, it's so Japanese. This thing, we're waiting in line there at 7 o'clock, you know. And there are people who are there, like me actually, I do this swimming each morning, but I'm on a bit of a time schedule. And there's a couple of other guys who are there in suits and stuff, and clearly they're here to get their exercise, then they go from the exercise to their office. Then there's other people who are just very casual. They're not moving quickly, they're in casual clothes, they're gonna do their swim, go back home, they're retired or you know whatever, it's just part of their, their, their routine. But there are a few of us who are, quote unquote, in a hurry. And we're in a hurry for two reasons. One is, uh, of course, I've got to get my exercise done and get, get to work, get back here in time for the streaming. But the other thing is the pool. It gets a bit crowded and there's, uh, what is it, there's five lanes available for us distance swimmers. And there's more people you know, that want to use it. There's, there's five, 10, 15 people who, who get in there to go swimming. So it's who's going to be in which lane and all this kind of stuff. So when we're waiting at 7 o'clock, there's one, one or two guys 
he's watching his clock and he actually gets ready and he stands down ready to do a sprint. And as soon as the counter girl says, okay, he sprints and runs, grabs his locker, and he's the first one into the pool. I got lane number one. You know, he wants that lane and blah, blah, blah. And we all sort of laugh at him. Guy, you're that much of a hurry. You go, you get what you want. It's okay. The rest of us will be sort of polite to each other. You can run ahead and do what you want. So there's that guy. We, we don't really like him much. He behaves like a bit of a jerk, selfish jerk. But the rest have the same problem. The other guy I mentioned who's got his shirt and tie, he actually gets his tie off and he gets unbuttoned while we're standing in the lobby. He unbuttons his shirt because <laughs> he wants, and he's lane number four. I'm lane number three, and I'm like, I want to get in there fairly, you know, to get lane number three, but I'm not going to run in advance of everybody else and push, push them out of my way. <laughs> so there's a wonderful dynamic that plays out. We want to get in there quickly, we want to get our lane, but we don't want to be selfish about it. And it's really, really, really funny to watch. And on days when it's the same particular group of people, there's no stress, because we all know where we're going and what lane we're going to grab, and we don't have to fight each other for this. But on, lane, on days when somebody new is there, or one of the regulars is not there, then the lane assignments are going to be kind of random. Or on the days where we can see over on the women's side, oh my God, there's twice as many women here today, and those, those girls are fast. They're all wearing their swimsuits underneath already. They just toss off their clothes and bang, in they go, and they grab their lanes. <laughs> so, there's a huge social game that plays out. Everybody's trying to be, <clears throat> well, of course, we're honestly trying to be polite, we're trying to be friendly, but I want a good swim. And if that particular lady with that red swimsuit plops into my lane, she breast strokes, and that's it. My day is spoiled, you know. But if I'm in there first, <laughs> so <laughs> it's really, really fun. Or you can forget about the politeness and just be like that guy I mentioned. He just says, screw you, I'm going to run in there ahead of everybody else, grab lane one, and you guys do what you want. And that's his attitude. You know? <laughs> so, and we never speak. There's no talking about this at all. You know? I guess the same thing must play out in other other places, other countries, other cultures. It must be the same thing to show. Do they know English? We speak Japanese when we're chatting with each other. Nobody's, they may speak English, but we speak Japanese. This is a normal Japanese uh, context to show. So, <clears throat> The lanes are numbered. I mean, the lanes have a meaning. I don't, I don't remember them all. I don't, lane 7 is for walking. Lane 6 and 5, they are for people who really can't swim. They are for people who are just swimming and walking and swimming and walking and trying to struggle, stuff like that. I went in lane 6 when I first went there because I just couldn't even swim one length. So, so five, six, and seven are done. Lane four is marked as fast. Length swimming, non-stop, fast. Mm -hmm. And lanes three and two are the same thing. Length swimming, non-stop, and four is marked fast. And the one I'm in three, it's marked shoe, middle. And then the next one to me, lane two, is marked uh, no, the, the slow one. And then lane one is not marked at all, it's open. So there's sort of an attempt to sort it out. The guy who comes, goes in number four, he's the suits guy. He's, he's not double my speed, but if I tried to swim in the same lane as him, it's just totally, it just, it's not fair. It doesn't make any sense at all. The lady who goes in three together with me, I go in first, she follows me, she goes in first, I follow her. I don't know her name, we've never spoken to each other, we know nothing about each other, but she and I spend 25 minutes together every morning, and she's just this little bit faster than me. 
So if, if she starts in first and I plop in behind her, then it turns out that 12 lanes later, she has moved ahead enough and I know now she's coming up behind me because I'm counting lanes. 11, 12, well, she must be behind me. So I stand at the end, let her go by, and we start again. And 12 lanes later, she has now caught up to me, up behind me. So she and I swim together with totally, absolutely no problem. What doesn't work then is after we get our 12, then we get to 24, and we're moving along very well. I'm thinking about the goal, 40 lanes here, and then somebody else plops in our lane. And if he's faster than us or if he's slower than us, it disturbs that dynamic, and it's all gone. And I thought, oh, no. And she and herself must be saying, oh, no. <laughs> So I have, a, I have a date every morning with this lady, and uh, I have no idea who she is. And she's still there every day when I'm finished. I do my 40 on a good day. I can't do 40 when there's a stream day because there's just not enough time. So I did 30 today and then came out. But I can imagine, uh, just imagine that lady who I, who I swim together with, you know. She's got a hat. Now, you can't recognize anybody. I would imagine if I was outside in a coffee shop next door or something and whatever, there's this woman says, oh, hello. This woman could speak to me and I'm saying, I, who are you? She says, I'm, I'm the lady who swims with you every morning. And I could say, oh, you know, I, I didn't recognize you with your clothes on or something like this. I don't know. <laughs> it's good fun, you know, good fun. Five days a week. And there is a little bit of, there's a little bit of status at play here. There's status, you know. I didn't get it at first, actually, and it is there, and it's no real big deal. The, the group of us in the morning here that go, the, the, my, my ticket to the pool, and I didn't really, really even know about this before. Here, here's my ticket to get into the pool. It's not high tech. There's no chip built into it. It's just the, the fitness card with a barcode. And bingo, you go in each morning, you come out of the elevator, and you beep, and they know you're in there. And when you're leaving after you finished, you beep in front of the, the laser window, and then out you go. So the pool people know who's coming and how many are in there and how often people are using it and stuff like that. That's my pass to get in. And my pass is a yellow pass. And most of the other people who are there in the mornings with me are not yellow pass. Theirs is, a, it looks like a driver's license, theirs. Mine is a cheap little yellow card. And I am second class citizen at this place because I have a yellow card. And it's, it's, it's okay. What they are, they're full members. They've paid a few hundred dollar fee to join the club, and then their monthly fee to use it is maybe it's about dollars, about $150 or so to use the full fitness club, the pool, the sauna, the fitness, upstairs, the running track, morning till night, weekends, holidays, free access. It's about 150 bucks or so. I didn't buy that. I bought the yellow card, which is restricted access, and it's called morning member. Morning member. And I'm allowed to use it from 7 to 10 weekdays, 7 to 10 in the morning weekdays. No holidays, no weekends, no afternoons, no evenings, no nothing. And this suits me very, very fine. That's exactly when I want to do this, a few minutes swim before going to work. It's totally okay. And for this, I pay 4,000 yen a month. What's that? That's about $32 a month or so. And I use it, what, 5, 10, 15, 20 times. So I pay about 2 bucks per time to go into this. But I'm definitely a, a second-class citizen because I've got a yellow card. <laughs> so.
fitness clubs in modern Japan are way different than they used to be. They used to be exclusive. You had to pay an absolute fortune to get in. It was crazy. Back in the bubble era, it was crazy. And in fact, I've heard stories from people. I think we've talked about this on the stream before. This same fitness center, when it was built, it was one of those super exclusive clubs. And to become a member, it was X thousands of dollars to join, like something like $10,000 to join. It was really exclusive. A two-story fitness center in a main center like this. You just didn't have those things. So there were people who became members. Some of the people who I see every morning, they had become members at that time, paid their $10,000 to become a member, and it went bankrupt. At the end of the bubble era, it went bankrupt, and they lost everything. And some other company came in and bought the physical structure of the fitness center. This is hard wood. I'm being, look at this. It's like cutting concrete, this little piece here. There's a strip here that's really hard wood. So those people who paid like $10,000 to get access to this club back in the old days, Dave walks in, pays 40 bucks a month and can use this, you know. So there's, a, there's, there's back, you know, there's a bit of back feeling in there, you know, so. No, it's not 10K to do things you can do at home. There's a 25 meter pool here. There's tons of machines. There's lessons. Everything's all included. There's huge baths. The bath is to die for. The bath is wonderful. It's a nice, nice, nice place. And that membership that I mentioned, that 10, 10, 000, uh, uh, about $10,000 membership, that was also, uh, what do you call it? It was, uh, you could sell it. It was a thing that you could buy and sell. The next person who wanted a membership, if they were full, you could sell your membership to him. It's like the old golf clubs in Japan. It was, a, what, do you, what do you call it? Convertible, it was sellable. I don't know, it was, a, it was, a, English, English, English. It was an asset, so you, you were buying an asset that you, you could then later sell. Same with the golf club memberships and stuff. But now it's completely different, totally, totally different. It's access for everybody. And the membership there, it's not one of these things that's trapped and you can never get out. It's you just cancel. There's a sign on the wall that says, if you need to cancel your membership, just do it before the fifth of the month and it won't be carried over to the next month and stuff like this. There's lots of quite strict laws now in Japan about that because uh, gyms and other stuff were, were trapping people in terrible contracts. And the government did come in and uh, and take care of it. I was estimated the conversion. It was the good I'd heard it was about a million yen. The the to buy the membership in the club originally was about a million yen. So I'm just rough. It's that was uh, back in the day that would have been ten thousand dollars. Now a million yen would be a. Uh, just over, just under eight thousand dollars, but it was that kind of a level, and that wasn't out of line for the time and place for the era, bubble era Japan, a major brand new facility like that in a place like this. That was not surprise. That was normal. It was normal. I thought I was sharp, and I am sharp, I think, but boy, this piece of wood is really nice and hard down here. Especially right here at this corner.
sure, but it seems so going, but I gotta be careful. These lines, you know, these lines are so important to this to this print. If, if I screw up here, it's big trouble. So sorry about the slow, slow and steady progress here, but uh, that's what this job is. So some days it's chisels and take it all away in seconds, and some days it's very slow progress. So. As you can hear today, Thursday morning is a recyclable day. It's cans, bottles, newspapers, cardboard boxes, stuff like that. And you're going to hear glass sounds, but you're not going to hear many cans because those have all been stolen already by the scavengers. They came along early this morning. I saw one of the guys out there when I went on the way to the pool, so. They don't take the glass, the scavengers take the cans. What do they steal the cans for? They sell them, of course. There's recycle depots all over the place. And these, these are sort of homeless people or semi-homeless people who are coming around to take these cans. And it's, I guess, it's illegal and it's theft, but the city and the police uh, leave them alone. And I don't know the thinking, but I could imagine, we talked about this before, the thinking is, you let them go, you know. Let them take it. You know, work for, for, for homeless people, it can't be all that bad. So just, just let them go. Nobody's going to steal the uh, the bottles. It's too heavy and there's no value, I guess. Now this part, as I say, this this is now difficult, this next part. The wood grain here, if I try and cut this way, it chips. If I cut this way, it's cutting smoothly. So this block in this area wants me to cut this way. So we'll try and do it this way. So we're cutting out and away from this line. How's our time? 8.46. We're okay. <clears throat> Someone says, does Japanese law still say it's theft even though it's trash? I don't know. I don't know the legality of this. All I know is that on the street, on the ground here, the city is not stopping these people. The city, who I think owns the garbage once you put it outside, has decided to back off and let the homeless people do it. They're doing it well. They scavenge well, clean it well, take it to the depot, sell it, and then they use the money to take care of themselves. In a German train, people ask for the bottle. I was drinking my water because you got the, I guess so. <laughs> 
To my knowledge, there's no deposit on, on glass and stuff here in Japan. I don't. There may have been at some point in the past. I don't think there's a system here. I'm not aware of any bottle deposits here. Perhaps there are such things in, in place, area by area, I don't know. More than glass these days, of course, it's the, uh, no, the plastic bottles, what, the pet bottles, whatever they're called. Mm -hmm. And ours are out there. The girls put our stuff out last night, so... Uh, I remember too, there's something else. <laughs> I had something else on my list I was supposed to tell you about today. <laughs> Wait till you just say, let me find the link here. Hang on a sec. Oh, I don't, oh, there it is there. I got the link, okay. <laughs> the other day here on the chat, we were talking about uh, James Michener. Uh, there was a, uh, I forget how the, the conversation started. We were talking about James Michener, the, the author, he's, he's long dead now, he's been dead for 20 years or so. Uh, he uh, influenced my work and I wrote to him and we had a bit of correspondence back and forth, whatever, whatever. And I had posted on my website uh, a story of his that he published many, many, many years ago. I think we were talking about making young people work hard and stuff like this, I forget, that's the, the story here. Someone linked to it with a funny link, this is the actual link. So it's okay, not to go around the whole story again. This was a story that influenced me and that had an effect on my life. So that's that. But then we talked about this the other day. And then just after we talked about this, it would have been one or two or just three days or something, I got an email in my box from the really, really nice lady. <laughs> A <laughs> really, really nice lady who runs something. It's called, I think, the James Michener Appreciation Society or the James Michener Society or something like this. And I guess they're based in uh, Texas, perhaps, where he spent the, the, the end of his life. And uh, it's, a, it's a group of people who are clearly, like, I'm maybe uh, a young if this group was here. They were people who enjoyed Michener's work when they were in college and stuff like this. And they're, they're boomer type people, my age and or older. And some couple of decades ago, one of them started this thing called the James Mitchell Appreciation Society, and they have a little website with comments about it and pictures from when he was younger and stuff like this. It's just a nice little tribute site to this guy, who these days is lost. My daughters don't have any idea who we're talking about. It's a, a, an author and a writer of, of my generation. Anyway, this group has this society and they have a meeting. Before Corona, they had a meeting once a year, and they used to do it on a cruise. This is America's cruise generation, people who are 60, 65, 70, 75, 80 years old, couples. They take cruises, and they would have the Mitchin Appreciation Society annual meeting on a cruise, maybe and, and, and targeting some area that Mitchin wrote about. 
uh, Hawaii or, or uh, you know, Cuba or something, or, or whatever, 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 whatever. Corona stopped that, and they have the meetings now by Zoom. Anyway, long story short, I got the email from the lady letting me know I'm a member of this appreciation society, I'm, I'm a member of this, and she sent me and 137 other people on CC the knowledge that the next meeting of the Appreciation Society is coming up on, you know, September the 27th, whatever, and please sign up and join us for these Zoom meetings, and would you maybe like to give a presentation about what James Michener meant to you and stuff like this, whatever. So she sends me and 137 other people on CC this last message, and these are all, you know, people like I've described to you. And when you look at the email addresses that are there, it's dot hotmail, dot yahoo, dot hotmail, dot hotmail, dot yahoo, dot aol, dot com, dot me, dot com, dot <laughs> so like maybe this I saw a Gmail, there was one or two Gmails, and maybe I'm the only one in there with his own domain, whatever. And you know what happens next. Somebody hits reply all and says, No okay, I won't be able to make it this year. And her reply goes to 137. <laughs> And it went around and around. It didn't get out of hand too much, but I haven't been in one of those reply all email chains. I haven't had one of these, you tell me, 15, 20 years. They used to happen all the time. And this, I just, I just smiled and laughed and saw these come in and 137 addresses and reply all and no, I can't make it. And if somebody does a thing, you know, you really shouldn't do this, replying all, and he replies to all. <laughs> it was so funny. I'm not laughing at the people. They are really, really, really nice people, but there's clearly, you know, there's clearly a type of, of email address and uh, how to use it. And I don't think I saw an Outlook in there. Are those all gone at last, or did that get all converted to Hotmail? I don't know. Anyway, it was Hotmail and Yahoo and AOL and a few other glorious things from the past. And it was so much fun. It seems to have quieted down now. It stopped now. But uh, those used to be a thing. My God. Reply all email chaos change used to be a thing. You know? Maybe some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. Whatever the younger people watching this, you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Back in the early days of the internet. That's a loud one. Backup button. So people are still doing this. Reply all chains, are they? It's a thing still? 
I thought it was long ago dead, you know. I think places like Gmail, if you're involved with Gmail, I think Gmail cuts these out, I guess. I don't know. Someone's looking for print. I can't see all the... Am I going to show my woodblock prints to those elderly Michener fans? No, 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 they don't know anything about me. No. I won't be doing anything to do with this meeting. I'm not part of the group, I know. Not at all. Not at all. Reply all still happens all the time. Really? Really? No idea. I haven't seen one in a long, long time. Oh, it's that time, is it? I understand. Hello, hello, hello. Soka, soka. How was your weekend? Weekend? No, wait. It's Thursday today. It's Thursday today. <laughs> this lady has been busy, busy, busy the last few days. You know, she's still, she's still up to here. You know, we sent out our 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 newsletter. newsletter thing whatever newsletter if that's what it's called on Friday and it was a long weekend here so orders came in Friday Saturday Sunday Monday and we started to get the, 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 the danger thing that happens to us when we do this we shouldn't send the thing on Friday because it always happens this way right somebody puts an order in we send it Friday which is Thursday for somebody out there so somebody puts an order overseas Thursday now we're now he goes to sleep. Now, we're now in Saturday. Ayano san is off Saturday, off Sunday, and this was a long weekend Monday. But the guys put his order in through PayPal, click. He got the automatic reply, thank you for your order, we'll be in touch soon. And 24 hours go by, nothing. And he's maybe, this is his first order with us, he's gone to PayPal, which he really doesn't like using, and he's paid, whatever. So another day goes by, and Ayano san is off Sunday, which he's riding her bicycle or something, no problem. And this guy's now getting nervous. He has ordered a woodblock print and paid through PayPal through this fly-by-night website, whatever. And he writes a letter saying, I didn't hear, no confirmation, what's going on? And I see this come in and I leave it alone. It's not my job, but she's not gonna be back for two days. Another day goes by and he writes again. And now I have to step in. I stepped into her email box the day before she came back, answered the guy, said, look, please, we're okay, we're on this. It's a long weekend in Japan. I'm really sorry, you know, we'll, we'll get to you back as soon as we can, you know. Because if I don't do that, the next step is he goes to PayPal. Three days have gone by. We haven't replied to him. We're obviously fly by night. He goes to PayPal, makes a claim of non-performance, whatever. And bingo, we go to PayPal. So we go. And this happens. Amazon has trained people so well that, you know, you click and place your order. And when you take your hand away from the keyboard, the box arrives at your front door. You know? yes. so, and we can't, we can't compete with that. Friday is the best day, you know, uh, so that they, they get some time to, to read newsletters. As long as we watch for these people who are getting nervous <laughs> in three like days, you know, so whatever, so, 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 so. Another long weekend is coming. I will be off tomorrow. Oh, what's this? Another? 
Oh, so, Friday. Tomorrow's a holiday. Tomorrow's a holiday too. My God, I'm paying people this week two days to sit at home and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Lucky lady, lucky lady. So, so, so actually, we're we're only the staff is only here three days this week. Interesting. Yeah, well, you're happy with this, yeah. When staff not here, and you have a nice quiet time, and that's that's Dave's one of the favorite times. It is, it is. <laughs> when nobody's here, because the trouble for me, I mean, I'm busy all the time anyway, but it's more difficult for me when 10 times during the day, people come and say, Dave, Dave, Dave. And whatever I was doing really totally gets broken. Mm -hmm. And I have enough trouble with this by myself. You know how I have, have trouble interrupting myself all the time. Mm -hmm. So when they're doing it as well, it's a balance, obviously. We need that kind of time, and yet I'm, I'm happy to have them here, they're fun, but at six o'clock when everybody's gone, I'm also happy. It's, it's okay, both things are true. I, it's not evil to say I that. Know, I know. I know. So she came in the door and right now, and I'm happy to see her. It's gonna be fun together to work, but when you're leaving, I'm also gonna be <laughs> happy. <laughs> so, it, wait, it beats, it beats oh, me. Is anyone there? Yesterday though, when you, you trouble, you were troubled for me yesterday, you know. You left at what? It was a little bit late, six ten or six fifteen yeah, or something. Because yeah, yeah. she's snowed in with work right now. But I, I got sidetracked. She snowed. So she leaves. She's the six ten. She left. And as she passes my room up there, I said, "Hey, goodbye." Thing. You're the last one, right? I thought I was the last one. You said you were the last one. You left, and it was hot. I got my shirt off, and I sat there in my shirt. Bei Chan was still upstairs <laughs> printing. And she came in, at the, I'm walking down the hall to go to their bathroom. I got no shirt on, and Bei Chan comes downstairs. <laughs> you don't mind this your name. She left at 9 o'clock. I had oh no idea. God. You'd gone. I had been out to grab dinner, came back, ate my dinner. I'm getting relaxed, had my shirt off, walking down the hall to the bathroom, thinking about getting ready for bed. And she comes down the stairs. <laughs> Come on, all of you. And she comes down the stairs, and I'm like, were you wearing something? Well, yeah, no, I was okay. I, I don't, I don't walk around naked any time of the day. But, but you had told oh me nobody God, was so left. Really you know, quiet she is. Ray Chan is. She's a little mouse. She works so hard and so vividly, but she's in her little cocoon. So and you could be in the same room, and you wouldn't even know she was working there. You, you know, this is not an evil thing to say. She is so... <laughs> no, I had my pants on. It's okay. I was wearing socks. <laughs> I don't know who was more surprised, me or her or the mouse. Probably <laughs> her. <laughs> They're like, oh, I didn't want to say. I really don't want to do so, 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 so. Yeah, a rat. We saw a rat. I mean... I know, I know, see, a mouse. Yeah, you know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So we're going to have to step it up again. Oh. I don't know. I know, I know, I know, I know. I whatever. Remember, they're not going to touch people. They're desperately afraid, so they're not going to touch you or bite you or come to you at all. And they're actually, we're using the word rats, but these are actually just little house mice. They're they're, they're not the same things that are ten feet long, uh, ten inches long, running around in the sewer. That's a quite different animal. You saw you saw the one that died the other day. Show. I showed you the picture. I don't think so. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Okay, it's on the black, look, look over the black phone, the last two photographs. Uh, I came down, when was it, two or three days ago? We had a stream, so it was been Monday. Yeah, yeah, you were talking about the dead so, rat, yeah. It was a dead mouse. Okay. <laughs> and you see, rat. it's a mouse, it's got cute little ears. Uh, that looks small then, that's small then. Yeah. I see like big rats in Japan. So, like so, so, so the thing is, rats, yeah. this is really too bad. In Japan here, we've just got this one word, nezumi, and it means the little cute house mouse, and it also means the filthy sewer rat that's 10 inches long, you know, and they're the same word in Japanese, you know. That 10 feet, 10 inches long, I'm sorry, whatever, 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 so, so. <laughs> She doesn't like my, yeah, you're going to stand on your chair and scream when one comes in the room, are you that type of person? I wouldn't have expected that. Okay, there are a type of, like, animals and then things that I don't like. I can't even hear. There's so much garbage noise. I can't hear. I'm sorry. I turned off the outside mic. Okay, the top one is for one nabi san. It's okay. a Tokaido set, and the bottom one is wood. You just leave it there. The, um, on Oyama san, they can take care of that. Yeah. And that's the wood for the surfer girl. It arrived. The color blocks for the surfer girl are here just in time.
Everybody's waiting. Everybody's waiting. Why did the guy park up here? My God, there must be trucks down the road there, I guess, where he normally parks. I'm sure he's not parking up here on purpose. Where are we? We're in the corner. We're very into it. Okay. Put the outside mic back on. Cats, cats, cats. Yes, this is really uh, a thing. This is now, this is serious discussion going on upstairs about the idea of getting a shop cat. It's now uh, an open discussion. And uh, they, 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 they really want to do this. And uh, I am, um, I'm still resisting because I don't want the responsibility. Remember, the long weekend, I was here over that long weekend, but if I wasn't sitting here working, if it was just a shop and Dave was out in Ome, we would have these occasions where there's three days when there would be nobody here. Once the shop opens, it's different, I guess. So I don't know about the idea of having a cat and then not taking care of it properly. So I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. Or we can assume that once Japan opens, we will have the shop open, so there will be people in the building seven days a week. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know what Nabi's on. It is. Oh, so there would once the shops open, there would be people in the building, so cat food would be would be okay. I have mixed feelings about that. You know, getting a cat and then leaving it alone. It's it's kind of abusive, I think. I don't know. No idea. Anyway. Cats are fine alone for weeks, somebody says. And there's certainly lots of food. Okay, where are we for time? It's 9.09, .09, so I can't start a big new project. Let's clear a bit of this. Let's do some very light tapping. No major persuading here, just some very light tapping. This area can be pulled out. I've already cut the lines. So it's going to be a replica of what you saw here. So just give me a couple of minutes to tap this out. So if there are mice, the cat will feed itself at first, but then presumably uh, the mouse problem will then be uh, disappear. So we can't expect the cat to live, live on mice forever and ever and ever. So, so it may be something that would help. So I don't know. Anyway, they want to do it. I don't. We'll see how it goes. A shop weasel, yeah, so. Or we can get one of those cat dog weasels that we've seen in Japanese art. It must be available here in Japan at the pet shop. Yeah, mice are endless. Yes, they are. But uh, if uh, we talked about this the other day, you know, if we do nothing, they will get way, way too much. We have to try and push them back. So I know we'll never get rid of them completely. I understand that. When you live in a big city like a support city, mice and rats are part of the background. But if we don't do anything, oh, the green is the other direction here. So eradication is not the goal. You know, cohabitability is the goal, a level of living together. You know.
this area is hard wood, you know. I guess we had the same thing up there. I chose this. It's got hard spots all over the place. We've got one here, which I want for the face. Although, man, that's going to be touch and go carving that. I chose a good piece of wood for this. I said the wood over there in that box, the guy just delivered it. It's the wood for this print. It's a bunch of other stuff as well. Aoyama-san, you know, we, we dry and dry and dry and slice the wood here. Aoyama-san upstairs, we, we glue it on to base plates. We then plane it close, but we can't plane it anywhere near smooth enough. So we send it to a place in Shinkiba, which is the Tokyo's big lumber district, lumber yard district. And there's a guy in Kiba there who has a, I don't know the name of it, it's a, it's not a jointer with a spinning blade, it's got one blade that sticks up, just a fraction, there's a base plate, and you push the wood over the blade, so it's a slicer. And there's a tractor thing that grabs the wood and holds it as it slides it across this slicer. So it's like you're planing a piece of wood with a plane that's this wide and the plane blade doesn't move, the plane blade is in there sticking up and the wood is slammed onto it and sliced across. And when the piece of wood is amenable to it, it works beautifully. You set it for a fine shaving and when the wood grain is all one direction, sap, you're good to go. It's very rare that the wood grain is all in one direction when you get a piece of wood that's as fierce as this. So this thing slices one side, tears the other side. Try doing it cross grain, it tears everything. So sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And the guy works with it, he knows what we need and so almost all the blocks we get back from him are smooth across maybe 80% of the surface or so. And then about 20% of the surface there's been a bit of upside grain and it's dug out a bit. So we sort of buff and polish those out try to or just if it's a block like this if this area had been terrible it wouldn't matter we just use the area that's good so we mix and match and mix and match How's our time? It must be, oh, it's here, it's here, it's here. Buzzers are buzzing, okay. Buzzers are buzzing. How many days does it take to carve a block? It's a meaningless question. Every block is different, different area, different detail, different everything. There's, there's, no, there's no answer to how many days does it carve a block. I'm sorry, I just can't give an answer. In a minute, when we're looking at show and tell stuff, ask me again in a minute how many, whatever, um, because I can answer that question then. show and tell we're going to continue I'm enjoying this actually I think this is a worthwhile thing to do for show and tell we're not going to continue for 50 long days all the way through this book but now we're going to continue for right now because I have nothing else to show you and this is interesting I am learning Taransan too when he, he was here the other day this was cool for Taransan to see you know so we're going to see a couple more prints in our Surimono albums book and again just a quick recap, these are prints that I made starting in 1999 over a period of five years, 1999 to 2003. I made a set of 50 prints, 10 each year, 50 altogether, prints that were designed to help me get a full rounded 
uh, training in the craft of Japanese printmaking. And so far we've seen whatever, the first four. They went out in January, February, March, and April of that year, 1999. Let's see what's next. Then the, the question there, how long does it take to carve a block? I can't answer that in one word, but here is what happened. Ten prints. We've got ten prints, January, February, March, April. I didn't do twelve. Oh, Akasaka-san. Ho, 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 ho. I didn't do one each month. I did ten in the year. So we're looking at five. I need a mask, right? Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> what do I do? This is one of the young men training to work in the shop. We're waiting for the speech tomorrow to show. Kishida-san is making his announcement tomorrow at the New York Stock Exchange. Oh, really? That's what the newspaper said. He's announcing, he's trying to explain to the, to the Wall Street people Japan's idea for a new economy is one. And second, he's trying to assure them that the Japanese economy is going to be safe and stable because on October the 1st, we are opening for tourism. We don't know, we don't know, we don't mm. know. He's going to say something like this. Hopefully. This is whatever. It's the, they, they tease us with this kind of comment. Ah, uh, teaser. <laughs> whatever. Anyway, so tomorrow's the speech. So tomorrow's Japan time. It will, we'll be asleep tonight when he's doing this conversation. So. Awesome. Anyway, 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 whatever. The, the, what I was getting at was that the, the, the time it takes to carve a block. What I was getting at is, okay, the prints here are different levels of difficulty. There's some white space, there's some detail, the next one has more white space, the next one has more detail, blah, 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 six colors, eight colors, 12 colors. There's one year's work for this guy tracing, selecting the design, tracing it, preparing the paper, pasting on the wood, carving the key block like you saw me working on just now, transferring colors, carving a set of color blocks. It'll be four or five blocks for each one of these. That's done, getting out my washi paper, cutting, sizing, mixing colors, getting printing, 200 copies. There's your timetable. Average of five weeks. So to do all those jobs, make this thing start to finish, set of blocks, 200 prints, package them, write a story, go to the post office, deliver them. Five weeks. There's your time frame. And I did that for five years. Towards the end of the five years, I was getting pretty much hot shot at this, and I made some insanely, insanely complicated prints in that, in that time span. We'll get there later, later, later. Where are we? Where's the next print? Here we go. Someone's got this, Gary Theosophilus. I haven't taken mine out of their original albums. Are you, have you got the first set, Gary, the first set? Are you one of those rare people who have set number one? I don't know handle names here. Can you tell me the name of the holding folder? I don't know, whatever, it's, it's here. They make them in all kinds of sizes and shapes and top opening and bottom opening. And I think, I don't know, if they're, it's, they're made in Japan. Does Amazon US sell them or whatever? I don't know. You know what to search for. It's up to you. They're called clear files. It's up to you. Okay, the deal here, the challenge for Dave here was simply, again, I was, because I had made just ukiyo-e prints for 10 years, the poet series I did was all ukiyo-e, black lines, flat color, black lines, flat color, black lines, flat color. One of the early things I wanted to do with this series was break away from that specific style. People think of Japanese traditional printmaking as ukiyo-e printmaking. It's not. The Japanese printmaking technology is much wider than just ukiyo-e. So Dave tried to do different things. The original of this was a byobu, a screen painting. And it's an unknown person, Tani Bunichi, unknown to the West, a big name here in Japan. So Dave is trying to get away from ukiyo-e a bit. He's trying to learn how to do uh, kasure carving, scratch carving. 
This is not delicate, neat, clean lines. This is carving and then smashing up the wood you've carved to make it look like rough brush strokes. It's also gradation on the key block again. There's all kinds of things here that I had never, ever, ever done before that I was desperate to have a try at. There's also an embossed pattern You see it? There's an embossed pattern of fan, of, of bones on the fan. He's gone upstairs. Where? So compared to the work I had done, this is just unbelievably rough. And this was this challenge at this time, to try and learn how to do work that was rough without making it look like it was all just stupidly done. This is your wabi-sabi, maybe? I don't know. Who knows? Gradation on the bamboo node. Also, there's embossing on the bamboo itself. And all the bones of the, of the fan are embossed. And this was also difficult. I remember this one. Doing the background was also difficult because in the poet series, I had never had backgrounds. They were always people posed against empty backgrounds. So this one was not trivial. A lot of learning went into this one. The embossing is usually done at the end, yes, while the paper is still wet. Well, the next one, I have mixed feelings about this. This was a show-off print. Dave had seen a reproduction of this print. It's, a, it's, two, it's two pages from an actual old book, and it was a book uh, dealing with uh, famous poets. And this was the frontispiece to the book. The pages of the book were simply cut silhouettes of the poets. They were easy, but the frontispiece. And Dave, at this point, he's still young. He's saying, I want to beat everybody else in this business. And at this point, he tried to carve smaller than he had ever seen anybody ever carve before. This is actually before I had a scope. What I was doing was eyes, and I had one of these. I had this lens. It's not the same one. I broke it originally, but I had one of these. And I tried to go as detailed and as fine and as fine and as fine as I could. Dave's mood was just like our, our Carver Chonsan, his mood at the moment. He's ignoring common sense. He just wants to say, look at me, look at me, look at me, look how delicately I can carve. And that's what I was trying to do at that time. There's your finger for scale. Those lines are nice. There's embossing in the uh, flower. And we have some calligraphy. <laughs> I remember when I did this, you know, I said I didn't have the scope. I, I, can't, I can't, all I can see now is a black blur. When I look down at the paper here, all I can see is a black blur. That's the scale. But it's what I wanted to do. You know, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm laughing at myself now, and I'm happy that I did that. These days, it's different things that I think are important, but I'm not ashamed that I went through this, this phase of saying, geez, I've got to burn this thing up. You know, it's okay. It's the Michener thing we're talking about. You know, take on big challenges, push yourself, fall down, get up, and push yourself some more, you know, there's nothing wrong with what I did, although I would just laugh at myself now, because it was, you know, but I did a nice job, you know, Hontoni, I did a nice job, and the pleasure, Taran and I were talking about, said, the pleasure of these lines, every single line, when you carve these, there's just pleasure in the work, I don't know, I, I, I can mumble about this. But if you haven't done this, 
it's a piece of wood. I started to make it. It's a blank piece of wood, Shell. And what you're doing is you're taking away everything except the black lines. You're leaving the black lines. You're not incising the lines, you're leaving the lines. And you have to leave every line with a start and a flow and a little thing at the end that flips up. Where's my, where's my poker, you know? I don't know, I just, you know, look, look, the line that goes down here, it goes down and then chook, up at the end. And even these, just these little lines like here, boom, 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 they fatten out at the bottom. The brush strokes of these original artists, these guys were just so good at what they did, and it's the carver's pleasure to then come along and turn every one of these little lines. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at these things. Chup, 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 chup. He did it with his brush drawing. Chup, chup, chup. It ain't like that with your knife. You've got to take away everything around it and leave the chup, chup, chup. This is so much pleasure to, to do this. And when you're at the level, when you do it and you look at it, you think, hmm, <laughs> not so bad, you know. And that was my pleasure and pride those years of doing this, you know. Look at these lines, the same thing. You, you probably don't, you know, the, the lines bordering this gray area. Look at them. They swell and they get thinner and they get thicker and they get thinner and they get thicker because that's the way the guy's brush went. Zoo, 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 zoo. It's a boat. What's in the water? We're up on the sec. We're in. The, we're at the second floor of a tea house, probably in the Shinagawa district. We don't actually know. So we are on uh, the second floor. That's the veranda. It's obviously maybe summertime. What's the, what's this flower lotus? Is this late summer? I don't know. I'm sorry. We're on the second floor of a tea house, and there has been a meeting of the poets. And these are books of poetry. This this whole book was a book of poetry and portraits of the various poets. And we're up on the second floor, and there's been a meeting, and there's been some poetry chanted, and there's been some sake drunk, and uh, maybe people are nodding off now, whatever. And we're looking out the second floor here. And again, this is not ukiyo-e. This is similar to what you would sort of call haiga. It's suggested. There's a mountain, there's a hill, just no one's going to draw a mountain. It's just enough to, I don't think there's any mountains in Tokyo Bay, but whatever, artistic license. For me now to look at this, the amount of pleasure, it's just a, a recap of the pleasure I enjoyed making this thing over that five weeks that it took to make this. And I can pull this out. I haven't looked at these in years. So to pull these out now and look at these, it's really a nice playback for me. I did that, you know, man, I did that. I climbed that little mountain. Huge pleasure for me. Is that wood grain in the tokonoma walls? No, it's brush strokes. So actually, okay, what you're seeing, it's good, bad. And I'll, I think there is some wood grain that really probably shouldn't be there, but it, it is what it is. These prints were made on new pieces of wood. So this is wood grain that ideally would not be there. This is carved lines and maybe brush strokes this way. Hey, don't find bad stuff about this print. Hello, morning. Good morning. Anyway, there we go. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. I guess we're got, we're getting maybe two of these pictures every time. We've got fifty of them to go through. <laughs> Whatever. It's fun for me to pull out these old things, you know. Okay, enough of that. Enough of that. Today's Thursday. I'll be back here in two more days, Saturday morning, and I will be doing exactly the same thing to doing today. I'll just be chipping away, chipping away, bit by bit on the surfer girl. Uh, I'll be able to do this probably until early October, at which point I will probably have to switch over to start work on the first print in next year's series. And that has to start early this time because there's a video and TV uh, going to be necessary for that through October and November. Look at this couple of hot rods here. Haven't seen these guys before.
<laughs> okay, coffee time. Thanks for, for your uh, joining this. Thanks to Koringami for manning up here, standing this all by himself. And next stream, no, it'll be two streams from now. Monday morning, Tokyo time, Sunday night, will almost certainly be a mod in person. Karen, I believe, is planning to come over. I think it's next Monday. It might be the one after. Whatever. I'll check with her first, and then we'll find out. See you later. So long, and thanks for all the fish. See you soon. The forecast really is for a ton of rain this afternoon. It's a 90% chance of rain for Asakusa this afternoon. We'll see.